this week is my prediction from last week. We'll pull up the, the sheet though and take a look. So, um, the games that I watched in full last week, I watched the Falcons vs. Jaguars, but I watched the Toy Story Disney Plus stream of that. Um, I watched Raiders vs. Chargers, Chiefs vs. Jets, and Seahawks vs. Giants. Only four games. Um, I was going to watch Lions vs. Packers, and I watched the first five, ten minutes or so, but then something came up, and um, I had to go do some paperwork at the bank, so I missed the rest of that game beyond the first, like I said, five or ten minutes. Um, let me get a pen here. This week we'll look at that Lions versus Packers game. Uh, I was only able to take five notes on that before um, I had to leave. Now I did predict the Lions to win it. And they did. Final score 34 to 20 for the Detroit Lions. Uh, some things I noted was that Goff was picked off the first drive of the game, and it was the third straight game that Jared Goff had um, thrown an interception after having that really long streak of not throwing any. But then on that ensuing drive for the Packers, uh, Jordan Love gets sacked on a big loss. Uh, third and 19, Packers the field goal. Goff throws a really, really nice pass to Amon Ra for the touchdown. Lions had just absolutely marched down the field at that point. And I noted that the um, Lions pass rush was putting lots of pressure on Jordan Love. Lots of pressure. Like I said, final score is 34 to 20. Jared Goff goes 19 completions on 28 attempts, 210 yards, one touchdown, one interception. Jordan Love, 23 completions on 36 attempts, 246 yards, one touchdown, two interceptions, but he also had a rushing touchdown as well. Now we come to Falcons versus Jaguars. This is your Toy Story game. So my commentary is going to be based on that. Obviously it was way different than watching the actual players. It was a lot harder to actually tell what was going on. It was more kid friendly, but it was such a unique and different thing, I thought it'd be worth talking about. Um, I did predict the Jaguars to win it, though, and they do. Starting off really good this week. I think I might get into the positive this week. Uh, here's some of my notes from that game. I said that the Toy Story mode was interesting. I wasn't sure if I'd watch the whole game like that. I watched like 90% of the game in Toy Story mode. I thought it was really cool how the, like the claw machine claw would bring the football down and place it. Um, but it was really hard to keep track of the game action and what was happening. Like half the time you couldn't really tell what the players are doing or where the ball was. And there was a point where I think the tracking software or something got confused and there was like seven or eight minutes of just the commentators sitting there talking like the the toy versions of the commentators talking with the field behind them with like nothing happening the slinky dog was just hanging out um falcons force a fourth down at the 50 yard line 
at that point I switched to the regular feed for like five minutes. I said that the Falcons run game does not look very good, uh, which was shocking to me. It was also really funny to hear English commentators on an NFL game. You know, I watch some soccer, you know, English football, so I'm used to them in that context, but hearing them say words like touchdown, pass, you know, things like that, like football terms was very funny. Um, Campbell the big sack on Lawrence on third and one, but then Lawrence converts the fourth down, which was huge. Um, Lawrence avoids a sack, throws a dime to Ridley in the end zone for a touchdown. And I noted that the um, announcers on the Toy Story stream are doing a really good job of breaking the game down and explaining it for children, like, in a way that I don't think I'd be able to do. Because they're, like, explaining what a down is. And I was kind of thinking, like, I don't even know if I could explain that, because it's kind of just something you know from watching the sport for so long. You just kind of know what it is, but they were explaining it really well. Um, Ritter drops to throw on third and one and is sacked. It felt like a bad play call. I'm not sure why they didn't run the ball there. And through the first 12 minutes of that game, Atlanta only had five yards of offense, which was just crazy. You know, especially, you know, I've talked about it before, but you have a guy like B. John Robinson there, and first of all, you're not running the ball on third down, and you're only having five yards of offense. And their run game was very stifled. I was a little shocked by all that. Uh, and I thought that Trevor Lawrence was really throwing the ball well. Um, you know, the Jaguars were marching, but finally the Atlanta defense gets a big stop. Um, field goal for the Jaguars. And I noticed that the Jaguars were just kind of daring Ritter to throw. Um, Jaguars were stacking the box against the run, and they really wanted Ritter to try and throw the ball. I think they thought that they might be able to get an interception there, force some incompletes, like... They thought that the Falcons did not trust the pass, and they were forcing them. They were trying to force them to pass. Jaguars push Ritter back 14 yards for the sack, and Josh Allen for the Jaguars. That Josh Allen had two sacks in the first half. Then Zerg appears out of nowhere, and we get Zerg vision over the field, and we start getting Zerg facts. The Pizza Planet guard drives onto the field throwing pizzas everywhere. Slinky Dog just stares on, blank-faced. And there's a big pick six with the Jaguars before the half. Like, big pick six. Um, first play of the next drive, Ritter throws in another interception. So it's back-to-back -back passes with interceptions for Ritter, one of which was the pick six. Uh, Lawrence goes play action on fourth and one, but gets sacked, and then we go to halftime. Duke, boom, does this jump. Uh, Duke makes the jump, of course. He is the he is the most famous man in Canada. Um, Falcons finally get a touchdown in the second half. And it's funny because the touchdown is to Drake London. They're playing in London. And the Falcons' run game finally starts to come alive. That third quarter, or that that third quarter felt like it was all Falcons. Jaguars weren't really able to do anything that third quarter. Um, then Atlanta gets into a scoring position. Jaguars' defense forces a turnover on downs, and that was pretty much the ball game. So final score is twenty-three to seven in favor of the Jags. Desmond Ritter goes 19 for 31, 191 yards, one touchdown, two interceptions. Trevor Lawrence, 23 completions on 30 attempts, 207 yards, one touchdown, zero interceptions. Now we have Steelers versus Texans. I predicted the Texans here. I was really high on C.J. Stroud. Um, and this game made me even more 
a believer this kid is gonna be something special in this league especially against that Steelers defense Texans get the win in very convincing fashion 30 to 6 in favor of the Houston Texans Kenny Pickett has 15 completions on 23 attempts 114 yards zero touchdowns one interception C.J. Stroud has 16 completions on 30 attempts, 306 yards, two touchdowns, or interceptions. I think that's back-to-back -back weeks of 300 yards passing for C.J. Stroud now. And I think this kid is the truth. I think um, he's the real deal. Um, yeah, moving on. Rams versus Colts. This was a close game. This one goes to overtime. I predicted the Rams here, though. And the Rams do get it done. 29-23 in overtime. And who else but Puka Nasua with the game-winning touchdown in, uh, reception. I From game one, I thought that kid was going to be really good. He looks great out there. And he continues to impress. Um, Matthew Stafford goes 27 completions on 40 attempts, 319 yards, one touchdown, one interception. Anthony Richardson back from concussion uh, protocol goes 11 for 25, 200 yards, two touchdowns, zero interceptions. So he also looks really good and he has this one highlight you guys should check out if you haven't um he is dropping back to pass he's like kind of jumping to throw the ball as he's getting wrapped up by Aaron Donald throws the ball into double coverage and like the receiver catches it it's just a crazy good pass um definitely check out that highlight if you haven't seen it Vikings v. Panthers. Vikings had let me down up to this point. Um, so, I was thinking, you know, maybe the Panthers will get the win here. I get my first L of the video. The Vikings end up pulling it out. 21 to 13 is the final score. Vikings are now 1 and 3. I don't know the Lions are. I think the Lions are easily going to win the NFC North. The Packers are kind of a wild card right now. I mean, the the Bears are a non-factor. They're they're obviously going to come bottom of that of that uh, division, but we'll see. Will the two spot be the Packers or the Vikings? I don't know. Hopefully, if you're a Vikings fan, maybe this win starts to give you some momentum. The game doesn't start out great for the um, Vikings, though. You know, first offensive drive for the Vikings. Kirk Cousins is intercepted, and it's a big six, 99-yard return. Not what you want to see in the end zone there. But then Bryce Young fumbles the ball, and that gets returned for a touchdown, so they get it back on the other side. But this was a close game. I mean, basically a one-score win in a game where both QBs gave up a defensive touchdown. That's it's a very tight game. Kirk Cousins goes 12 for 19, 139 yards, two touchdowns, two interceptions. Bryce Young goes 25 for 32, 204 yards, zero touchdowns, zero interceptions. And we have Buccaneers v. Saints. I picked the Buccaneers here. I don't even remember why. I think it was because of um, the Saints offense. I'm still not sold on them. Especially after this week, I'm not sold on them. And the Buccaneers have looked a lot better than people expected them to look. So I picked the Buccaneers here. Wasn't super confident about it, but they do get the win. 26-9 in favor of the Buccaneers and Baker Mayfield. It looks like he's back. Uh, I'm really happy for him, you know, Baker getting the Browns to their first uh, postseason in like.
like forever. You know, he's a hero in Cleveland. It sucked that he was pushed out for Deshaun Watson. Um, felt a little, you know, like he wasn't maybe treated the best there at the end. So seeing him bounce back and really th thrive with this Buccaneers team, they're three and one right now. They lead the NFC South. And Baker Mayfield had a really good game. Uh, 25 completions on 32 attempts. 246 yards, 3 touchdowns, 1 pick. Derek Carr goes 23 for 37, 127 yards, 0 touchdowns, 0 picks. Um, yeah, nothing but field goals for the, for the New Orleans Saints. Which with that defense they have... You need to get that offense going. I don't know if they will. I don't know if it's Carr. I don't know if it's the offensive uh, play calling. I watched one Saints game earlier this year. I noted that there seemed to be a lot of miscommunication and chemistry issues on offense. So that's something they'll have to be working on, I suppose. We'll see. Maybe that is coachable. But their defense is good enough to be good in the playoffs if they can bring that offense up to speed. Commanders versus Eagles. This one goes to overtime. I predicted the Eagles to win here. And they do. But it's so weird. I said this last week. The Eagles are 4-0. But I'm still, like, not sold on them. And even, like, the power rankings aren't sold. Now you look at the power rankings right now, I don't think they're top three. Um, they're four and zero, but the offense looks shaky. And you can look at Jalen Hurts' stats; and they look good. But if you're like watching him play, the decision making is like the team looks like it's taken a step back from last season. Even though they brought in more talent, and they're still undefeated, so like it's weird. But I'm still like not sold on the Eagles being a Super Bowl contending team. I don't think they get back to the Super Bowl this year. Final score here is 34-31 in favor of the Eagles. Um, Sam Howell goes 29 for 41. 290 yards, one touchdown, zero interceptions. Jalen Hurts goes 25 for 37, 319 yards, two touchdowns, zero interceptions. Um, Dolphins, Bills. Now, I picked the Bills here. I thought that was an upset pick. Somebody let me know that the Bills were actually the Vegas favorite, which I was not aware of. Uh, I figured it would be, you know, they would be the underdog of the Dolphins' offense. But the Bills do get it done here. Very convincing fashion. 28-point win. They win the game 48-20. to 20. Um, Just completely dominated the Dolphins there. And opening touchdown of the game to Gabe Davis, and he does the Shane Gillis uh, celebration that he had been asking him to do. thought that was pretty funny. Obviously, Buffalo was a favorite, but just barely. The closing odds were Buffalo by 2.5, over under 51.5, so they took the over there, but Buffalo nearly got there by themselves. Um, to a deck of Iloa, 25 completions on 35 attempts, 282 yards, one touchdown, one interception. Josh Allen goes 21 for 25. 320 yards, 4 touchdowns, 0 picks. He also runs one in. So 5 total touchdowns generated by Josh Allen. I had a lot of concerns about Josh Allen and the Bills week 1. I thought he looked, he looked really bad. They looked really bad week 1. But um, at this point, all of those concerns have been kind of gone gone now. Three straight wins and they've looked convincing in all three so I don't know what was going on with them week one against the injured Jets that was concerning but for me that concern
concern has subsided now. Um, but who I am concerned about and who I don't think is going to be getting any better anytime soon, the Cincinnati Bengals versus the Tennessee Titans. I predicted the Bengals here. They end up getting blown out. And until Joe Burrow decides to actually sit down, rest, get healthy, and rehab that calf, and let the backup QB play a few games, I'm not picking the Bengals anymore. Joe Burrow can no longer throw the ball longer than like 10, 15 yards. He's simply incapable of doing it. His calf is so messed up. He cannot put weight on it. He can't plant off that foot. And the, the, the problem is, is that the other team's defense knows that he's hurt and that he's not going to get out of the pocket. So they're just collapsing the pocket every drive because they know Joe Burrow is not going to scramble out of the pocket because he's injured. The Bengals need to sit down, play the backup, let Joe rehab, get healthy, bring him back in like two weeks. Like, it's just at this point, he could get hurt worse because of how he's playing. Final score is 3-27. to Bengals fall to 1-3. and three. Uh, Joe Burrow goes 20 for 30. 165 yards, 0 touchdowns, 0 picks. Ryan Tannehill goes 18 for 25, 240 yards, 1 touchdown, 1 interception. And after the game, Jamar Chase um, had some choice words. He said, I'm open. I'm always effing open. So, obviously some locker room issues may be going on there. But for those guys, it has to be frustrating. Um, they've kind of been on the cusp the last few seasons. They were expected to be, you know, pushing for a Super Bowl now. This is their window of contention. You have Joe Burrow, who just got this massive contract, one of the biggest contracts in NFL history. And then after he gets that contract, he comes out and he's playing the worst football of his career because he can't use his leg. Like, just sit the dude. He'll probably win games with the backup because he'll actually be able to throw the ball more than 10 yards. Ravens versus Browns. I took the Browns here. Because I've had some question marks about the Ravens, especially defensively. But the Ravens decide to wake up for this game. Blow out the Browns 28-3. Lamar Jackson had two rushing touchdowns in addition to two passing touchdowns. Sorry, I had to sneeze. Um, we had 28-3. Ravens advanced to 3-1. and one. Lamar Jackson, 15 completions, 19 attempts, 186 passing yards, two touchdowns, and zero interceptions, plus the two rushing touchdowns. Um, and also, uh, Deshaun Watson ended up sitting this game, which I was not aware of at the time I made my prediction. Uh, so, Dorian Thompson Robinson is your backup QB. He goes 19 for 36, 121 yards, zero touchdowns, three interceptions. So, not a great game for him. Broncos v. Bears. This is the one I you know, jokingly said it was going to be a tie. It wasn't a tie. The, the Bears were surprisingly blowing them out. Then Denver comes back, ties it. We go to overtime. Once the game goes to overtime, I'm like, oh, please, 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 let this game end in a tie. We can do it now. Unfortunately... We know it isn't overtime, that's right. The field goal stopped overtime. We almost went to overtime, that's right. I was hoping the field goal missed, yes. Um, and the, the, the crazy bit is the part that has to suck for the Bears and Justin Fields, because Justin Fields is actually having a decent game here, is that the tying uh, 
uh, score was a defensive fumble touchdown for the Broncos. He dropped back to pass. He sacked. He fumbles the ball. That's taken in for a Denver touchdown. Like for Fields, that has to be terrible. Final score, 31-28. Russell Wilson goes 21 completions on 28 attempts, 223 yards, 3 touchdowns, 0 interceptions. Justin Fields goes 28 completions on 35 attempts, 335 yards, 4 touchdowns, 1 interception. And, um, yeah, the, apparently they were saying after the game, Justin Fields was just sitting in his locker room. And, like, he was just sitting there in his pads and helmet and everything for, like, half an hour. And, like, everyone else had left and gone home, and he was still just sitting in there. So... Yeah, it's a bit rough. You have to imagine the season he's having. There's a lot of stuff going through his head right now. Uh, unfortunately, not a die, though. Finally, we get to the next game. I was able to watch Raiders versus Chargers. I predicted the Chargers to win this one, and they do. I get back in the W column. Saw my notes from this game. I said that uh, Herbert runs in the first touchdown of the game. Also, this was the the NFL debut of Aiden O'Connell, the rookie QB for the Las Vegas Raiders. And with Jimmy Garoppolo this season, the kind of performances he's put up, I have seen a lot of Raiders fans clamoring for. They call him AOC, funny enough, but clamoring for O'Connell to play that get the kid a chance. People thinking, like, he could be better than Jimmy. Well, we know now he's probably not going to be better than Jimmy. Um, O'Connell gets a nice throw for the first down. Uh, Chargers get what looks like a rushing touchdown. As we know, the, the Raiders get what looks like a rushing touchdown. But, um... The review calls it short. O'Connell with a QB draw to die. Get his first NFL touchdown. Um, big catch ruled incomplete after the review. Chargers challenge. Challenge confirms a catch. Good challenge there. So, you know, Chargers threw the ball. They said that's not a catch. But then they challenged it. It is a catch. Uh, Herbert was sacked for a loss of eight. I said that the Raiders' pass rush was looking good early. And then Chargers uh, end the half with a field goal. Was it a field goal? Where was it? No, that was the second. Yeah, that was the start of the second. They get the field goal, excuse me. Um, and there was a woman in the audience that just had slime on her head. I don't know how that happened. Uh, Devontae Adams goes down hurt. It looked like a shoulder injury. I don't remember if he came back into the game or not after that. Um, Aiden O'Connell fumbles the ball. Chargers recover. And then Chargers throw a touchdown to Keenan Allen after an unnecessary roughness call. Next drive, O'Connell fumbles yet again. Back-to-back -back drives with fumbles. Um, and I noted that O'Connell seems to have zero pocket awareness. He really doesn't know who is or isn't around him. He's like so focused downfield. He's not really paying attention to his peripherals. Um, Chargers tack on a third touchdown before the half. And after that touchdown, they cut to Max Crosby on the sideline, who just looks like he doesn't want to be there anymore. I was noting in the second half, like, no receivers are able to get open for the Raiders. Like, you, you can look, and every single receiver the Raiders have is completely locked down. Raiders fumble yet again. First play of the second half. Raiders recover. O'Connell gets sacked on third down. And then Raiders kick a field goal on fourth down. At that point, I turned the game off to the cheek the Chiefs versus Jets game because the game was so one-sided in favor of the Chargers. Um, it looks like the Raiders start to come back a little bit later in the game after I turned it off, but the Chargers still get the win. Uh, Aiden 
O'Connell goes 24 for 39, 238 yards, zero touchdowns, one pick. Justin Herbert goes 13 for 24, 167 yards, one touchdown, one interception, and he also gets a rushing touchdown. Patriots versus Cowboys. I picked the Cowboys here. Cowboys win this in very convincing fashion, 38-3. to Mac Jones goes 12 for 21. 150 yards, zero touchdowns, two interceptions. One of those interceptions is a pick six. Mac Jones also fumbles the ball, which is returned for a touchdown as well. So Mac Jones has a really rough game against this really good Cowboys defense. Dak Prescott goes 28 completions on 34 attempts, 261 yards, one touchdown, zero interceptions. Cardinals versus Niners. I picked the Niners here, obviously. Niners get the win. 35 to 16 against the Arizona Cardinals. Um, but Joshua Dobbs actually doesn't look that bad here. Uh, 28 completions, 41 attempts, 265 yards, two touchdowns, zero picks. Apparently they have finally started selling his jersey in a team store. Um, Brock Purdy goes 20 for 21, only misses one throw, 283 yards, one touchdown, zero interceptions. Christian McCaffrey has three touchdowns this game. Absolutely crazy. Uh, two rushing and one receiving touchdown. No, excuse me, three, three rushing, one receiving. Chiefs v. Jets. So this is a game I turned on after I turned off Raiders v. Chargers. Um, I noted that I turned the game off. There was nine minutes left in the first quarter, and the Chiefs were up three. I turned the game on. Immediately, there's a big play for Isaiah Pacheco. Touchdown to the Chiefs. Um, Jets go three and out. Next drive, Chiefs touchdown to Noah Gray. I think their offense is just totally rolling right now. Um, Mahomes, he threw a super risky 50-50 ball as incomplete. That forces a fourth down. Uh, face mask on Taylor gives a safety to the Jets for their first points of the game. I've, that's a, I haven't really seen that call before. I don't think a, a face mask forcing a safety to get you points. I'm not sure I've ever seen that. Um, Mahomes is intercepted. He threw into double coverage. It was a really weird don't know why he made that pass. You see he's like mad to him, mad at himself on the sideline. Um, Back-to-back penalties for the Kansas City defense puts the Jets in good field position. And then Wilson, Zach Wilson to Uzoma. Touchdown. I said it was a really nice pass. And Pacheco, you know, Chiefs get the ball back. Pacheco just does not go down when he's running. It takes two guys to bring him down. Uh, I noted that the Jets passing looked surprisingly good against that Kansas City defense, especially with Zach Wilson in there. Uh, Jets missed the field goal right before the half. Second half, Mahomes gets intercepted on the first play of the next drive. Two interceptions from Mahomes in the same game. I'm not sure he has ever thrown two in the same game before. I don't I don't know if Mahomes has done that. And I I said that he looked totally rattled against that Jets defense, which shocked me. Um Wilson gets sacked. And, oh, this you think this was still before the half. He threw that second interception. Wilson gets sacked in the first half, but I said the Chiefs they have to be feeling a little bit nervous. Sorry to clear my throat there. 
um, Jets come out to start the second half. They get a touchdown. Wilson runs the ball under the two-point conversion, and it's good. Chiefs get the ball back, but Jaco immediately gets a flag. And I was like, the entire Chiefs offense looks rattled. It was wild. I've never seen them look like that. Then Mahomes gets sacked. That sets up a third and 16. Mahomes throws an incompletion. And the Jets come back on the field. And I said their pass game is just completely carving up the Chiefs off uh, the Chiefs defense rather. Brees Hall gets a massive reception. Chiefs get the ball back. Mahomes marches down to the end zone, gets sacked, sets up third and nine. And the Chiefs offensive line just looked totally out of gas. Chiefs field goal to go up three. But then there's a massive defensive play to get the ball back. Um, big hit on Mahomes. Sets up third and 12. Mahomes runs it for the first down. Mahomes gets picked yet again. I said that's his third interception of the night. I think that ends up getting called back. But the defender did have it. Yeah, I said the defensive holding takes it off the board, which is a huge call. There's a defensive hold, but man, what would have been a third interception? Um, this game is, you know, shockingly close. If you're a Chiefs fan, you have to be nervous about this one. They do get the win, but the final score, 23-20. Against the Zach Wilson led Jets. You know, he got two passing touchdowns against you. It's maybe you're concerned about that. I don't know. Patrick Mahomes goes 18 for 30, 203 yards, one touchdown, two interceptions. Zach Wilson does 28 completions on 39 attempts, 245 yards, two touchdowns, zero interceptions. Finally, last game of the week, I watched Seahawks versus Giants. I predicted the Seahawks and the Seahawks win it. Extremely convincing win. Seahawks are three and one right now. They look really good. Thankfully, I took some notes here. Uh, so this is what I thought about the game. Um, I'm not sure, but I'm pretty sure this is Seattle's first Manning cast. Thought that was pretty cool. Jamal Adams was back. He missed a ton of time with injury, and then he goes out after two plays. Takes a knee to the head, out with concussion. Uh, so that was kind of dumb. That, that sucked a lot. Um, there's a bye week coming up, thankfully, so he should be back for the game after that, but still. Um, Seahawks stopped Daniel Jones on the fourth down QB sneak. What they're calling like the tush push there's been a lot of discourse around it people are like oh it's unstoppable but I think it was stopped two three times this week we stopped it here on Daniel Jones uh, Kenneth Walker goes down but he isn't down ref does not blow the whistle he gets up runs in a touchdown unopposed but then on review they overturn it Geno gets sacked on third and 12. Seahawks are forced to punt. I noted that early the Giants offense was looking more fluid than the Seattle offense. Um, but the Giants kept going. No huddle. Like, they would just refuse to huddle. They kept going hurry up. No huddle offense. Um, big hit on Jones. Sets up third and 11. And then the Seattle offense has a terrible sequence of like four calls in a row against them. Sets up first and 25 because of a bunch of holding calls. Um, Seahawks sack Jones, force a fumble. Geno to DK, touchdown. There's one. Geno drops back, throws the ball. The defender like deflects it, but it goes back into Geno's hand and he ran it. I'd never seen that before. Uh, Gino walks off. He looks a little bit hurt and shaken up after he got like a little bit of a late hit going out of bounds. Drew Locke starts.
starts suiting up. Gino comes back out. The players start kind of fighting. Then Gino, or Gino comes back out on the field, rather. But then Gino went back out on the sideline again, and the Giants starting center also left the game. It's a weird sequence. Um, I noted that um, Witherspoon was just lighting everyone up. Wither Witherspoon was all over the field this game. Then Drew Locke does come in. He goes down to Fant. It's almost a touchdown, but Fant is down at the one. Then they walk it in for a touchdown before the half. Giants go three and out. Seattle gets the ball back with a minute left in the first half. And the New York crowd starts booing, just booing, booing, booing. And um, at that point, a graphic came up. The Giants had been outscored 77 to 9 in the first half so far this season, which is, like I said, they're playing from behind basically every game. Gino comes back out to start the second half. He starts slinging three complete passes in a row. Then the Seahawks um, break off two massive runs. They, they get a fourth and one situation to a weird play action pass. I'm not sure they didn't run it there. Really weird play design turnover. Um, but the next Giants get the ball back. The Seahawks force a three and out. And I noted that um, Daniel Jones is just unable to evade the pressure, and the Giants continue to go no huddle, even though it's not working. At that point, Jones had been sacked six times. Seattle goes three and out. Uh, Giants march down the field. They get on the goal line, but then Daniel Jones is intercepted. Witherspoon with like the 99-yard pick six. Trying to get the ball back again. Daniel Jones gets sacked again. Throws another interception, and uh, that's the game. And at the end of the game, Jones had been sacked 11 times. 11 sacks on Daniel Jones. Just crazy. So, end the week with a W. Uh, Geno Smith goes 13 for 20, 110 yards, one touchdown, zero interceptions. Uh, Daniel Jones goes 27 for 34, 203 yards, zero touchdowns, two interceptions. One of those is a big six. Um, just quickly, some stories, some stats I just thought were interesting this week. Um, this, uh, I saw this post, it said, if you feel like the games haven't been good this year, you are correct. This is the highest number of blowouts the NFL has seen through four weeks since 2014. The last time we had this many blowouts, your rookies were Odell Beckham Jr. and Aaron Donald. Drew Brees led the league in passing yards. Marco Murray led the league in rushing, and Mr. Big Chest himself was first in receiving. And I think there's a big problem right now with O-lines across the board, save for like two, three, four teams. Offensive lines are like terrible, and I don't know why. It's such a hard position to be good at, but I'm sure there's an explanation, but it feels like there's no good offensive linemen, even like highly picked linemen end up being busts. Like what is it about the position that's so difficult to have good players? I don't know, but definitely a concern. Um, I saw this. Jalen Carter ranks second amongst all NFL interior defenders in pressures with 20. He is only behind Aaron Donald, who has 22. Carter has played 85 fewer snaps than Donald. Um, the Detroit Lions have the number one rush defense in the NFL. They held Isaiah Pacheco to 23 yards. Kenneth Walker, the third, to 43 yards. And B. John Robinson, to 33 yards. I thought that was very cool. And then another stat, uh, Daniel 
Jones is 1 and 12 in primetime NFL games. His record on Thursday night football is 0 and 4. On Sunday night football, he is 1 and 1. On Monday night football, he is 0 and 7. And he is 0 and 1 on Saturdays. So, that's, um, that's interesting. I think they have two more primetime games this season. So, interesting stat there for Jones. But I do hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please leave a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel for more content just like this almost every single day. Uh, we have the Discord link in the description box down below if you want to come talk sports or anything else. And let me know in the comments what you thought about the games this week, actually. Hold on. I went 12 for 16 this week. I almost forgot. This week. So, what is that? I'm going to my calculator. 12 divided by 16 for 70 per 75%. forgot. So I'm now at 36, 4, 64, 36 for 64, which gives me 56%. So a nice little comeback there. Let me pull up my sheet. So 12 for 16, 36 for 64. That is... Sorry, I almost forgot, but I, I got to the end there. Um, but yeah, comments down below. Let me know what you thought of the games this week. Discord link, all that. Until 